Okay, it's August 11th, 2018, and today we are going to map that. We're gonna to walk to it. I'll try to get some video while we're walking, but the island's not very big. We're standing on the mainland, mainland right now. But the goals today are to map the island, see if any of the Keweenaw dikes actually go up into the Jacobsville, and see if we can get to the actual top, which is a little over 100 feet from uh, lake level, which is 602 feet above mean sea level. Before we get started, that awesome boulder last year was over here. And all that rubble Sarah was walking on, I don't remember it being that bad here. All this ripped up Jacobsville, here's Jacobsville in place. But uh, yeah, we're gonna go. So if yeah, you get goes that by way. the current, you need to let it kind of take you and then start heading towards shore. Okay, if that happens, thank you. Good safety trip, yeah. Yeah. At least me, I'll read stuff. Oh, uh, yeah, the, the Jacobsville here not only has mud glass in it, it also has uh, top, glass of copper ice like this here. And other local rocks. This should sit directly on the compound nice and and the uh, uh, intrusive volcanics. You can kind of see from here. You can see the reddish rocks of Jacobsville. In the background, you can see the grayer rocks. Which would mostly be the compound creek nice, which is cross cut by all those uh, metadia bases and and uh, land porphyries and stuff. Can do this right now but there's gps but you see something here the jacobs all changes um it's typically like it was on the beach and now you're starting to get a lot of mud class and a lot of coarser grain and we're almost to the island right now the small one probably not going to use my field notes here i'll have to add them in the book later but uh because this is kind of treacherous i'm going to get right there first that's definitely conglomerate Okay, there's the GPS. And the Jacobsville here, here is very typical of the conglomeratic intertonguing part of the Jacobsville found near uh, the Keweenaw Fault. As you can see, there's conglomerate and stuff like that. I am gonna try to actually take a measurement here, at least if I can get up here. All right, so I just came from that. And you see, as you walk through the lake, the rock stays conglomeratic. A lot of mud clasts, some rather large mud clasts. And then, as you get up to the little higher ground, they disappear. So, this would be a tongue of the Jackson Creek within the uh, Orienta Formation, which is what I'm standing on right now with the Jacobsville Group. All right, this is the Campo Creek Nice. There's Sarah right down there, you found me in the lake. Uh, we're making progress slowly, but this is where it starts to go up. And what you can see here is you can see this is definitely Nisic, and this mineral, it's also very pegmatitic, um, almost granitic, not Nisic. And it looks like foliations follow the structure, the exposure of this hill, at least right here. So I'm going to take some measurements and move on. Want to say hi, Sarah? Ugh. Don't fall. Hi. <laughs> you don't have to say hi if you think you're going to fall. There's the mainland. Here's where we are right now. And just real quick, I want to show you. This is definitely a Campo Creek nice, unquestionably. Although here it's very granitic looking. You don't see very metamorphic structures. You do see some um, micaceous inclusions or banding in there. But overall, this is a coarse grained, not, it doesn't look very deformed. And over here, you've got pegmatitic crystals. And, but the formation is Campo Creek nice. And it seems to be all over here. And where it just was, was just over there. It's actually right there. And it seems to go straight up the hill. We are still in the Campo Creek Nice, but there's another interesting dike here. 
I'm not exactly sure its extent, but you can see where my shadow is, my finger? That seems to be the contact. It's Campo Creek nice in the direction my finger's pointing. You come down, this changes. It's not the same as that basalt. Believe it or not, I actually did not do this. Somebody else did. <laughs> um, but this is the other contact right here, which I'm gonna measure. Nice there, whatever this is. And this is a very weird looking, at least weird-ish, because it's it's got grains to it. This is obviously an intrusion. Uh, I can't study it in detail here, but um, I'm gonna log this and then move on. I had to uh, adjust the topo map a little bit because I didn't have it as high as it is on here. So that was one of the goals of doing this. But here you can see the uh, foliations and myelinitic texture within the Campo Creek Nice, the black and the, and the uh, pinker rock. So this, this part is Nisic. Uh, it seems to be as you get towards the center of the island, it becomes more granitic, less Nisic. The light, part of the myelitic texture. You get structures like this that aren't really truly oriented. You get some orientations, but like this, but it's hard to tell. So, and I can't really get any reliable measurements. And there's some white quartz, and you have some micas, biotites. Um, but yeah, I can't really get any good measurements if I can't get any. Uh, dips on the foliations. I, I could get the trend, but they also seem to follow some fractures. So, as you can see, the black line there kind of follows the fractures over there. Oh. Onward! We are almost to the north end of the island. Ooh! Yeah. Yeah, it is. You have some uh, secondary veins within the grayer part of the nice. This tannish part, if you will, I hate that word, is weathered. This is fresher. And you see the veins stand up better to erosion. Let's see what do we have down there. Oh, look at that down there, Sarah. There's a dike down there. We have to get down there. Well, that Keweenaw Dyke, I think is Keweenaw, I saw atop the cliff, I think this is it down here. We are not to that spot yet, but this is likely an extension of it. And it trends, yeah, come on, trying to get it to, it trends slightly northeast. I'll get the actual detailed measurements here in a minute. Then we're gonna try to see if we can get, get down to the bottom of the cliff. The dike is exactly 7.1 feet wide. I measured it its exact width from there to there. And you can tell it's slightly, the surface dips this way, but the uh, dike itself dips that way uh, to the Northwest. It's almost vertical, but not quite. And you can see some faint columnar jointing here. It's not very pronounced, but it's perpendicular. Like this would have been the side of the intrusion and your columnar jointing is perpendicular and you can kind of see this part here kind of tried to form a hex hexagonal shape and couldn't so it's not perfect but uh, the fractures are perpendicular to the strike of the dike and uh, Sarah said she saw some cool quartz up here I'm gonna try to see if I can see it where'd, where'd you see it Oh, it's just a little guy. Yep, yeah, some quartz veining. Oh, look, it goes all the way to meets the dike. And comes out now. And it's probably what, an inch or two thick at the most? Yeah. Oh, wow. That's probably 30 degree angle from the dike. You can see through the weathering here within the nice. You can see the complex undulations, if you will, cross-cut by dikes, by pegmatitic dikes, uh, showing 
deformation. And down there, right there, is clearly a dike. Um, it's got nice within it, so it's probably not that much younger than the nice itself. It's not queuing all like the one I just showed you, but I'm not getting down there. I'm not going to measure it. I don't know the extent of it. I don't think it's that important. I'm beginning to think this is dumb, but let's see that you can kind of see the dike just to the behind Sarah, close to where the cliff is. Um, it probably does come under all these boulders, and uh, we'll see if we can get over here. On the other side of the dike, it's here. I'll take measurements and where I first noticed it, we were right up there. I up down and around and came back. I think Sarah's mad at me. Not mad. So I'll make my measurements and we'll get back up and get this moving. Before we move on here, so you have Kempel Creek Nice, Keweenaw Dike, Kempel Creek Nice. It's 7.35 feet in, in width from there to there. I measured it. There's a little jut right there and right here. But 7.35 feet is pretty consistent through most of it. And I just wanted to show you this real quick. This may be slightly magnetic. My Brunton, when I put it up next to it, did seem to move a couple degrees. But, I mean, this obviously has a lot of iron in it anyway. But you can see these structures here. They look like ripple marks. They're about the width of my thumb, which I know is 0 0.9 inches in width. Uh, um, it's a little wider than that, so probably a full inch. Uh, they look like ripple marks, but they're not. Let's get down on them right there. These are part of the cooling process. You get, if you look at these, when this cooled, as you can see, it started to kind of try to clone their joint, but there's a lot of rounding. So this would have been closer to the edge, so this would have cooled faster. So you get little, little things like this in it. So we decided to go back the way we came. Although we probably could get up that way, we couldn't get up to the first ledge. So we're gonna to try to go under this. Don't sneeze. Hand me your pack. I got it. That turned out okay. Okay, one of the goals was to find this junction here, this cross where that GPS is, the two lamb porphyries, all right? And here they are, here's the junction. Okay, so Dyke A basically follows this chasm here up gets deeper down this is the actual intersection but here's the gps right there and that's a good 10 15 feet down okay something people didn't notice before did the map that's dike b it's almost east west there it comes down meets dike a and then here it is again and goes out almost east west so a has to intrude b and A may actually follow a fault. And that part of B right there might be this strike slip. Now, which would offset it, I don't know, maybe 10 feet. And you can see other drill holes here. Sarah, are you ready to cross soon? Oh, I'm ready to get back in the water. 